Welcome in, everyone. This is another edition of the Full Time Roundup Podcast. It is your host, Daniel Brackett. Joined alongside me today, another preview episode, best bets, fantasy advice. Harrison Clark, how are we doing? We had a great weekend in Carolina Beach, um, and I uh, hope you're recovered. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a great weekend. Uh, a blast with the boys. Um and yeah, no, I, I think that I mentioned on the last pod that uh, we are getting older and it's kind of the same scenario, just with different sort of activities as the lake from previous from the previous week. So, uh, you know, the body's still getting back to 100 percent, but uh, I'm happy to join you for another week of the EPL and other other leagues. So it was a damn shame that it was international break. Over the weekend, it would have been fun watching Prem games with, with all the fellas um, at the beach. But uh, I had this thought um, actually earlier today, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't watch one fucking international game. And to be honest, I could give less of a shit about it. Um, <laughs> the Euros, the Copa America was just on. Like these little international breaks. At this point, I don't know if it's just like I'm just not as tuned in with all the sports coming back in terms of international break. I just don't really care. I feel like there's too many of them, and it doesn't really matter at all. Am I am I alone in thinking that? No, I think the Nations League is one of the stupidest tournaments. Like, what's the point? What are they playing for? The quality is bad. No. Do we even no. know what they're playing for? Okay. No. Um, really, the only game that I even thought about tuning into was. Uh, the U.S. game, and even that, like I, there was a lot going on, so I just didn't even, didn't even look. Um, and Pochettino is not there yet, so honestly, as long as this old regime is still kind of there, I don't, I don't want it a whole lot. Um, so, yeah, uh, international breaks, they're they're a little too much for me right now, and I, I, I prefer the big tournaments a hundred percent, and I just think there's a a little too much international play. I, I completely agree. Um, don't get me wrong. I love international tournaments, but these games, you just see injuries, especially when it's your team and your players that get injured. Um, and we'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit. I just, I don't care. If Pochettino was coaching the U.S. in this window, you'd bet your ass I'd be watching. Um, but with Mickey Varis coaching the squad, I think we lost to Canada 2-1. Really glad I didn't watch it. He blasted the players after afterwards, which is I, I honestly I'm here for it after the last six months of US national team football. But uh let's go ahead and jump into our preview. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, not as good as we 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 left off on a really, really solid slate. And I'm not saying the slate this weekend is bad, but I would say the North London Derby saves it. And that's the one we're going to talk about first at Tottenham um, against Arsenal. Odegaard in crutches, Marino out, um, and Rice suspended. So I looked at the squad that Arsenal has and thinking to myself, who's going to be the third midfielder? So you got Partey, you got Jorginho, and then it's basically a coin flip on who Arteta is going to start. Is he going to start a youngster? Is he going to put Zinchenko in there? Is he going to – I don't know. I, I don't even know who he'd play at the number 10, to be honest, Harrison. Do you have any I mean, any clue? Like, I guess, could Saka play the 10? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. Could, Tro- could Trossard play the 10? Trossard could play the 10. Or oh, I, I guess he like- could put Havertz. Havertz. Havertz in the 10. I mean, it's a throwback, but he did play – yeah, he did. Mid at one point. Back in his Leverkusen days, his glory days. Um, yeah, this game is uh, – it always brings fireworks regardless. Like, I think about the games, the high-scoring ones especially, where I think Kane had a hat-trick, I, I want to say, against Arsenal back in the day at the old uh, White Hart Lane. Um, but two teams that are very exciting. Um, Spurs off a tough loss to Newcastle. Um, some questions, I think, defensively, maybe. Um, and then Arsenal coming off a draw to Brighton with, of course, the Declan Rice red card. Um, but I, the, the losses in midfield are concerning, 
especially for this matchup. Um, I could see Spurs pulling out some sort of result. I could too. Spurs, like you said, are one, one and one, not a great start to the season. They need a win badly. And it wouldn't, you know, I think this could really a win for the North London Derby could really propel them into, uh, you know, some good momentum. And then on the other side, um, yes, Arsenal did beat Aston Villa, but they dropped points right before to Brighton. They play this game, and then next week it's Manchester City. So if Arsenal drop, you know, points in three games in a row for looking ahead, I mean, is it Leverkusen or is it Liverpool's league? No, it's <laughs> it's going to be Manchester City's league. I'm not going to take that bait there. Um, we have a really tough schedule in October, so ask me then if it's our league. But Arsenal could be in big trouble in terms of challenging for the title if they drop these games due to these midfield injuries. Um, so I'm looking forward to this game. I I, I lean spur draw or Spurs here, um, but I, I do think – uh, it's going to be fireworks. I, I love that it's a standalone game on Sunday. Not a fan of the nine o'clock kickoff. I'd rather it be the eleven thirty kickoff, but um, that's just complaining at this point. Um, but well, we got a much we got a much better game at eleven thirty. So Wolves Newcastle absolute <laughs> barn burner, like you said, in Wolverhampton. You know, people love Wolverhampton, uh, according to Noni Matawake. Shithole. Um, absolute shithole apparently um but another prem game that i thought was at least pretty interesting um we have Cher- the cherries or bournemouth versus chelsea and i actually think this is a coin flip game here you never know what you're going to get out of chelsea bournemouth have been a little hot and cold as a chelsea fan are you worried for this game or are you are you thinking this is going to be a, a a win for for the blues I mean, I I worry over every Chelsea game, so let's just get that out there first. I yeah. I especially do worry more with the the mid table to lower table teams because for some reason we just don't we just don't win those games, especially recently. Um, but then again, we did go on the road to Wolves and beat the shit out of them, so I don't really know. Uh, Bournemouth coming off a, I mean, the craziest win already of the season, and maybe it will stand as the craziest win of the year. Um, so obviously that's some momentum. Does the international break kill that momentum? I guess we'll, we'll wait to see with that. Um, and then with Chelsea, you just you just never know. So it's just a matter of who shows up and who doesn't. And that's just kind of how it is on a weekly basis. And that's what I've come used to. So, um, you know, I'd love to see if they get Lavia maybe back in there. Um, I know he's like a little knocked up. He's got a hamstring problem. Um, but I think most importantly, I'd just love to see the chances that we do create finished. Uh, that's kind of how it goes with Chelsea. You either finish them or you don't. More often than not, the past two years, it's been not finishing them. So if Nicholas Jackson can actually finish his chances, because obviously he had some good ones against Palace last time out, uh, I like Chelsea's chances a lot. But again, it's a mid-table team, and you never know what you're going to get against them. Cole Palmer is healthy, yes? I think. He was left he off. Picked up a knock, right? He, he got a little knock, and they kept him out of the England squad, and they also kept him out of, I believe, the European Conference squad. Um, then again, we are playing teams that we should handle in the Conference League, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. But I do believe that he is saving him, especially with load management nowadays. I think that he is saving him, especially for the Premier League game. So I think he's good to go. Okay, that's that's good info there. Um, last game that I, I have circled here is the Southampton versus United game. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do you have this game circled? Well, Southampton haven't won a game all season. And United yeah. are off a really bad loss to Liverpool. So they've had the entire international break to kind of mull over it, learn from it. And I genuinely think that if they do not win this game, then Tig Ten Hag actually might be out. So, do you think, uh, man, you take care of business here, or do you think this is going to be a closer game than than we're giving it credit for? 
I mean, if they care at all about their manager's livelihood as a Manchester United, you know, as the head man, then uh, they need to win this game. Because I agree with you. If they if they're dropping points to Southampton on the road, with the kind of squad that United does have now, granted, like I say, kind of squad. Like I'm not comparing them to City, but they have a far better squad than Southampton. Um, if they're not able to win this game, then you know, Ten Hag is definitely in trouble, especially coming off the uh, Liverpool loss. So <sighs> asking me to pick a side in this game, like, I mean, it's hard not to say United. I mean, Southampton, like, I don't see how they don't finish 20th this year. They are so pitiful. But <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, it's so hard for me to even want to say United with how they've played. So, you know what? Give me, <laughs> give me a... Give me a one-one draw. Southampton gets the gets the gets the point, and then Ten Hag's just gone. I, I'm like, I'm honestly so tired of talking about Manchester United because they are just they're just so annoying. No, I, I, I'd have to agree. An absolute diabolical dry, uh, draw that would be. Um, Does Casemiro start? Well, he's in Galatasaray, so no. Wait, what? Yeah, Did I miss that? Yeah, he got loaned out literally after the game, basically. Holy he, shit, I completely missed that. <laughs> they literally shipped him off to Galatasaray right after. He's Man. he's literally gone. Clearly didn't have the notifications on at Carolina Beach. My God. Unless I miss that, and that's like in the future, but I am pretty sure Casemiro's a goner. Holy fuck. Now, I really hope I'm right there because that would be really stupid of me to be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's gone. Unless I'm wrong. Unless that didn't go through. I thought, I don't know. We'll have to see. But Casemiro, if he's there, he'll start. Um, and Ugarte doesn't get in yet? No, I don't think so. I think I would start him, but I don't I don't think he'll play. Um, but um, a game that kind of fits up pretty similarly to this, just in a different league here, AC Milan plays Venezia. Um, AC Milan have had a pretty nightmare start to the season here against the promotion side very similar matchup actually milan is at home though i think this could be it for their coach if if they lose this game no Morata, obviously but other than that they're fairly healthy do you think they'll take care of business again probably need to uh it is crazy that we're living in times where after three or four games managers can get just completely sacked but then again in the age of social media and the amount of comments that people have on certain issues i can also say that i'm not that surprised and with a team with the sort of quality that ac milan has i mean two points out of their first what three uh that's not going to cut it um so at home against Venezia, i fully expect them to win this game and it's similar to ten hog like, like if he if he doesn't then it could be bye bye. Pack your bags, Fonseca. I think they'll win this one, though. Um, Hashtag I do. pack your shit. I, I do think that. Um, now, in the Bundesliga, the one game that stood out was Gladbach Stuttgart. We saw a little flash from Stuttgart. They were unlucky to lose to Bayer Leverkusen in week one. They beat Bochum in week two. Um, and, you know, Stuttgart have been an interesting opponent, too. I think this is like almost a coin flip game here. Who are you backing? I don't know, but I like goals. I always do. And Gladbach, like, what? They've been scoring. They've scored, what, five, four in their first two. So that's solid. Um, their new striker, what's his name? Kleindest? Kleindest. Yeah. I never, know, I never know how to pronounce these German names. But uh, Gladbach, you know, they have they look solid to start this year, which is obviously massive. They needed it after the kind of disappointment they had last year. Um Give me the home side, Gladback. I like them 2 1. Calling like my that. shot. Calling my shot. I'm taking a 2 2 draw here in terms of, of that match. Um, going to La Liga, we have Girona versus Barcelona. Now, Barca are absolutely purring right now. And then you have a Girona side who hasn't been as good this year, but Girona completely owned Barcelona. And it's at Girona, both Catalan clubs. Um, I think Barcelona have a vengeance to, to really take out on Girona, and and I like I like Barcelona a lot in this game. How about you? 
Probably. But Girona have also outscored their opponents 6-0 in their last two. So, uh, all of a sudden, they got the offense purring a little bit. Uh, you're right. Girona certainly does have Barcelona's number over the past couple of years. Um, mm, but the kind of the, the way the front four is going for for Barcelona, it's hard not to back them. I mean, Lou is bagging. Rafinha all of a sudden is bagging. Olmo is looking acting fantastic. like he's the second. Yeah, like he's all of a sudden the second coming of Jesus Christ. Like I don't, I don't really. It's hard not to back this Barcelona team. So I lean them, but Girona is going to give them fits. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Um, I'm going to go with 3-1 Barcelona. How about you? I'll say 2-1 Barcelona. The second game, which has large implications with the first game, Real Madrid, Real Sociedad, um, La Real versus Real Madrid. Um, Real Madrid haven't looked very good this season. Um, this is at Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad's looked okay, not great, not good. Um, so, you know, I still think they will give Real Madrid trouble here, but do you think Real Madrid continue to drop points or do you think they'll kind of bounce back in this one and, you know, close that four point gap? Yeah. I mean, we'll see if the, if the bet this win starts to ignite them a little bit, it's been real, real sluggish to start the year. Um, and we'll see if it lights a fire under Mbappe, who obviously got the two goals last game. Um, but the San Sebastian is a tough place to play, Dan. It is. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked. I would not be shocked in the slightest if they drew or lost this game as well. Like, uh, yeah. it's just regardless of injuries or form or all that kind of stuff, for a big game, Sociedad's building is usually rocking. So, I. Uh, Mm, I'll go one one, and Sociedad pulls out some sort of result. I have to agree. I like the one one play there, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back that as well. Now um, we'll talk about fantasy players we like, and then we'll give you guys best bets in terms of the Premier League fantasy. Um, the players I like a lot, kind of going off our previous conversation. I really like Bruno. Get Bruno. Uh, Fernandez and, and Garnacho in this matchup against Southampton. Garnacho, you know, didn't start the first two games. I think he starts this one. And then Bruno has actually played really well, but it hasn't shown up on the score sheet. I think this is where Bruno Fernandez kind of scores a goal or, or an assist here. So I like him a lot as maybe even a captain here. Um, if you don't have Holland or Salah um, and, and I definitely would start Garnacho as well. And then, Brighton play Ipswich and and you gotta back the the Brighton attackers and, and they're in full form. So if that's Chao Pedro, Welbeck, Minta, Adingra, probably not Adingra because I think Minta is gonna start over him, but I'm gonna side with I like Jao Pedro a lot. He takes the penalties and I think he definitely bags one or, or gets a nice assist for the fantasy. Yeah, I like those. Uh first guy, Alexander Isak. Got off the board last week, and this is a guy that obviously, if you've been playing fantasy soccer, this is a guy that you trust a lot. Um, obviously, he has a pretty high uh, price, usually around eight point five to nine, so you're paying a decent portion for him. Uh, but he got his goal last week, and we mentioned that you know strikers breed off confidence, and goals give give strikers that sort of confidence. So I wouldn't be shocked against this Gary O'Neill Wolves defense, which looks like it could be in shambles. Uh, if Newcastle bagged at least a couple and if Isak was on the end of that, my other one I have, or other two I have, I guess I have Menta, like you mentioned in the Brighton game, the guy's been an absolute animal on the wing to start the year for the Seagulls. So I like him to at least contribute in some sort of way. And then the other one I have is, oh, James Madison with Tottenham. We mentioned that Arsenal's midfield is potentially also in shambles with no rice, no Odegaard. And now you're putting a lot of trust in Jorginho and Thomas Partey to hold down the fort. I don't necessarily buy that a whole lot. Um, especially at this point, like I, I honestly don't know the last time I saw Jorginho play the game. So um, I feel like if Tottenham is going to pull out a result, it could very well come from them in midfield. And James Madison has been a creator already to start this year. You can see the balls he's playing into the box and the sort of creativity he has. So I like him a lot. 
to at least contribute in some fashion. Yeah. My other sleeper pick that I was thinking about, um, or two, you know, if Ollie Watkins does not play, got to start Duran. That's a must start. The guy is red hot right now. Freak. So I would look at him as your bench. And then, especially if you have Ollie Watkins, um, that's a nice swap right there. Uh, call it a handcuff in, 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 in fantasy football terms, but Another sleeper pick here. I, Ollie, I was Watkins, doing a, Ollie Watkins might be fully droppable at this one. Uh, he I might be know, fully but, droppable. I mean, Depending God. on what you have, if you have the draft or, or the the budget, I, I would probably cash in the budget um, one um, for him right now when he still has like an eight to nine rating, and you could probably find someone better. Now, I like Harvey Barnes, and I like what you said against Wolves. Harvey Barnes did not start the season. Jacob Murphy did. He's come off the bench and scored, and he scored in his last game. He's very cheap, and he's actually on the waiver wire right now in terms of my league, and I might pick him up for Tavanier, who's on my team right now. So I, I do like um, I do like Harvey Barnes a lot. Now, uh, we, we'll go ahead and get to our bets in terms of uh, the bets. My record is 5, 3, and 2. Um, I went 2, 2, and 1 last week. I'm going to start off with United Moneyline. I just, with the talent and how bad Southampton is, I just, they need a win very badly. Ten Hag's on the hot seat. I expect them to at least get the job done. I don't think it'll be pretty, but I still think they win. Um, Barcelona, Barcelona money line. I think they are going to try to demoralize Girona here. They, no one likes a rival owning them last season, especially since it's a Catalan club. Um, so I do think that Barcelona will handle business. Leverkusen, Hoffenheim over three and a half. Hoffenheim, Leverkusen, two of my favorite over teams last year. Going to go ahead and ride that over three and a half. And then Spurs plus a half. Um, a little higher odds, but worth the juice um, in, in terms of just the availability with Arsenal's midfield. Those are my four picks. And I have, geez, I just lost it. Uh, Leverkusen over three and a half. A lot of goals in their games earlier this year, and they're playing Hoffenheim, who in the past has been immune to giving up quite a few of their own. Potentially the grossest pick I've ever had on this show. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, disgusting. And this is purely like, honestly, I feel horrible about it. So whoever's listening, like, if you don't want to tell, like, that's okay. I'll just ride this one on my own. But, uh, <laughs> We're taking Everton plus one against Aston Villa. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Hope your headphones didn't just blast out with the vomit coming through. But uh, the lot, this is a line thing. Like why is Aston Villa only minus two fifteen against Everton? That just makes no sense to me. And even like looking at Aston Villa's spread, like minus or plus one thirty. Or minus one and a half just looks way, way, way too easy. Uh, so I guess I'm going against the grain here. Uh, can't say that I've always been a contrarian guy, but we're gonna do it for this one. We're gonna we're gonna ride Everton plus one. Um, we're gonna take Liverpool minus two. I think they're they're playing Forest at home. Liverpool just look like an absolute wagon to start the year. I don't see why they can't. Um, put up at least three and properly shut them out as they've shut out every team so far. Uh, we also have Spurs plus half. I agree with you that the midfield is concerned and this is a really good spot for Spurs, I think at home. And I'm also adding another one um, kind of off of what we talked about. I'm taking Sociedad plus 0 0.75, which is uh, a draw, a draw you win. And if they lose by one, you get the half rest of your money, money half your money back. So, um, again, like I need Madrid to show it for me consecutive games, and they haven't done that so far. So, um, give me San Sebastian to be live. In terms of the Real Sociedad pick, my United pick, basically all of our picks this week. You know, sometimes our most uncomfortable picks are are the ones that are are a beauty. So. Let's pray that happens this week, Harrison, for the record's sake. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even though the slate's not as good, I hope you all enjoy it. Um, you know, 
I'll definitely be watching Premier League mornings instead of the Panthers. I'll tell you that right now. Holy um, shit. And let's not get into that because it just makes me sad. But thank you for listening to another episode of the Full Time Roundup Podcast, a preview episode. And we will be back on Monday or Sunday night to recap the action that happened this weekend.